Hello everybody. This is the last lecture from the cycle, from this very special cycle devoted to the Russian native breeds. In this case, we are uh, consider the breeds non recognized yet by the FCI. And the topic of the day are two breeds. Russian Hound and uh, Russian pine, Pied Hound. Two breeds. Two uh, related breeds. But before to read the standards, before to analyze its provisions, before to give the comments, as usually I start uh, from model approach. What does it mean? Uh, some of you who were participants in the previous lectures know what does it mean. And for newcomers, I will repeat it. So, for the deeper understanding of the standard provisions, I will, I will use model approach which includes two models, biomechanical model of the dogs and harmonic model of the dogs. The first one is devoted to the soundness of the dogs, as well as the second one to the harmony. These models are resulted by long years researches done by me during 24 years from 1963 to 1987 and based on the specifics of the Soviet breeding strategy. According to that strategy, the only breeding commission of each breed club was in charge of breeding plan a year. And uh, since 1963, during almost 30 years, I have been chairman of that commission, first in the Doberman Club and later on in Schnauzer Club. In some periods, that plan included per year about three to four hundred broad beaches. So statistics was huge. And the hypothesis appeared during breeding process where I checked for the trustfulness. Biomechanical model of the dogs is the integrity of postulates. And the harmonic model of the dogs is integrity of harmonious proportions. Later on, I have defended the doctoral dissertation in biology named Dog Conformation Improvement Through Biomechanical Model of the Dogs. So, the previous hypothesis became afterwards status of scientifically proven facts. Therefore, you can fully trust them and use in your practice. Both by mechanical model of the dogs and harmonical model are of practical value. Judges can find here universal reference points which help them to increase the objectivity of their assessment. And the breeders can find here the selective algorithm for acceleration of the breeding progress. <clears throat> and this is a short <clears throat> preface. Now I am going to tell you about the biomechanical, my biomechanical model of the dogs. You can see here a lot of different lines and some uh, angles. I will tell about each of them step by step. The postulate number one. is concerning the top line proportions according to which uh, the spinal column from the beginning to the end from the top uh, from the first thoracic vertebra spinous process to the tail set is divided by the anatomical parts um, according to the ratio two one, one. When two units fall to the thoracic part of the spine uh, or actual back, one unit falls 
on the lumbar part or loin, and uh, this one unit falls on the sacrum, which is the upper part of the croup, usually named uh, rump. So, 2-1-1 is the ratio between the actual back, loin, and uh, sacrum. The postulate number two is uh, uh, this one. According uh, to this postulate, the axis of the pendulum is 90 degrees. Uh, what is the pendulum? It is the conditional name uh, I gave um, to this angle created by two blue lines, this oblique line and that oblique line. The first one is along the medium line of the shoulder blade. And the second one connects the hip joint and the iliac tuber. This is the point of intersection and the angle between these two lines is 90 degrees. I call this construction a pendulum because it will be uh, quite suitable to me use it. But this is not really a pendulum. This is only conditional name of this construction. The postulate number three is the postulate about two horizontal lines. So you can see in front of you uh, two red horizontal lines. The upper line connects the sternum and the end of buttock, the end of sciatic bone. The second one connects elbow joint, not ulna, but joint, and knee joint. One more time, I would like to emphasize that the very beginning of this red line, the upper one, is from point of sternum, not from point of humeroscapular joint, because otherwise I will lose part of body placed in front of humeroscapular, which is wrong. Now, we will look at the picture with two vertical red lines. So you can see two vertical lines, this one and the, that one. Uh, according to the first line, the elbow joint is located exactly under the top of withers. And uh, in this case, you can see that the stifle joint is located under the tail sends. Uh, to this postulate belongs another picture. Uh, I would like to demonstrate it to you now, and the explanation will be given later on, when I will be shortly give comments to each of the postulates. So, at this picture you can see uh, another combination. The lower line uh, remains, and here is the top line. And here is the spinal column. Spinal column is practically horizontal. Look at this, please, and look at that, please. The elbow joint is located exactly under the very beginning of the top line. And the stifle joint or knee joint is located exactly under the end of the top line, end of the spinal column. And uh, the explanation, as I promised, will be given later on. Here you can see two lines, two another horizontal lines. 
the upper line remains the same and the lower line connects front and rear limbs when dog is placed correctly what does it mean uh, correct zootechnical position means that the elbows are moved under the body that the elbow joint could be placed under the withers and the rear legs are placed behind to the vertical rear pastel no but now i will go back to the very beginning and we'll give you a very short explanation of each postulate. So, this is the complete picture where all postulate illustrations are presented. Coming back to the very first postulate, named 211, what does it mean? Uh, I will not direct your attention to these numbers. I will uh, direct your attention to the reason of this ratio. What do I mean? The actual back or thoracic part of the spine is the longest part of the spine. Lumbar part or loin is the short part and the rump or sacrum is the short part. Later on, I will give you the explanation about these numbers and the value. But now you have to keep in mind that the back is the longest part of the top line so in any case the actual back is relatively long loin is relatively short as well as the sacrum relatively short uh, let us consider this idea and uh, analyze what does it mean if the actual back or thoracic part of the spine is long that means that the chest or rib cage is also long because the thoracic part or back is the upper part of the rib cage during my researches it was proven that the selection directed to the long chest or to the long back leads to the deep chest that's why we have two dimensions of the rib cage length and the, the depth which provide maximum capacity of the rib cage we do not consider uh, a cross section of the chest and do not order that the chest in the cross section would be too broad because otherwise uh, two sprung ribs will violate positions of the shoulder blade and upper arm uh, they will be declined from the correct uh, direction and uh, the translational movement of the dog will be violated so the only two dimensions should be on maximum length of the chest and uh, depth of the chest and they provide roomy rib cage and this is uh, important because 
inside we can find heart, lung, and the general blood vessels. And the roomy chest provides the best conditions for the best development of heart, lung, and vessels. This is the one aspect which is the conclusion from the long back, relatively long back. The, another aspect will uh, follow from the short, from the requirement of the short loin. Just a moment, I have to emphasize that everything uh, which belongs to the biomechanical model of the dogs, all postulates are, and uh, the biomechanical model itself uh, are valid for the majority of the breeds. And there are some exceptions. We do not consider them and uh, the hounds, Russian hounds and the Russian uh, bite hound do not belong to this exception. So, uh, requirement of the uh, short loin leads to interesting phenomenon. The motive thrusts from the rear, when they are transmitted to the iliac tuber, should be further transmitted to the front. And uh, the function of the loin <clears throat> is to be spring. When a loin is short, then its oscillation amplitude is not a big. And, uh, <clears throat> and the loin involves in this process of the oscillation, the back. And uh, the point of connections point of connection is here. Last four ribs, false ribs, are not supported from below. They do not, are not connected with the breastbone. And in this part, back is deprived of this support. And that's why is vulnerable. But when the oscillation amplitude is not a big uh, to be transmitted to this part of the back, that do not destroy too much this part of the back. And uh, vice versa. When the loin is long, the oscillation amplitude is big. And big oscillations transmitted to the last part of the back, deprived of the support from below, uh, is getting destroyed with the age and uh, loading. And uh, uh, with the age and loading, it's getting sagging. So the long loin is the cause of the soft back in the future. The preconditions are created from the long loin, preconditions of the soft back. Uh, another uh, aspect. Uh, long loin um, transmits the motive thrusts uh, with some delay. And this delay can have influence of the phases of the limbs. And uh, instead to be contrary in antiphases, uh, this uh, will be violated. Uh, they, it will affect of the uh, side rolling and uh, this is the pacing. So, the long loin 
viewed from other uh, point uh, can uh, uh, provide, can create the preconditions from the async. This is the first postulate. The postulate number two, 90 degrees by the th axis of the pendulum, uh, creates the preconditions from the balanced movement when dog is trotting. The balanced movement means, first of all, that the front leg, front strides and the hind strides are equal. And uh, you will see uh, how it will be created. We have some illustrations for that to be considered a bit later. Besides that, that requirement of the right angle in the point of intersection means that the slant of the shoulder blade and the slant, slant of the iliac bone are not independent and their dependency is determined by the 90 degrees angle at the point of intersection. If these lines uh, are uh, presented, uh, when dog is trotting, the hip joint will go up so much as knee joint will go down. The deviations from these positions up and down will be equal and that's why we can see that these lines are oscillating contrary in antithesis. <coughs> and that's why they will compensate uh, oscillations of each other and uh, the top line will remain level and this is extremely important because level top line is the best conditions is best uh, provides the best conditions for the transmission of the motive thrice thrust from the rear to the front they are transmitted along the level top line. Uh, moreover, in this case, when uh, spinal column remains level, dog should not work to lift the center of gravity. And that's why the dog is not tiring. Important. Nevertheless, this postulate, this principle, cannot provide the optimal slants of the upper arm and the upper thigh. They can be slanted quite differently. Look at this, so, 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 or that, so, so. And we are looking for the best positions of these two elements because they are in charge of the uh, optimal value of the humerus scapula angulation and uh, coxofemoral angulation. Next postulate, postulate of two verticals uh, can provide this optimal slants and uh, finally optimal angulations front and uh, rear. You can see if the elbow is placed on this vertical line, that means that the upper arm is slanted counterclockwise as much as possible uh, with the physiological limits. 
and uh, this angle is approaching to 90 degrees and in this case when uh, stifle joint is placed under the tail set slant of the upper thigh correct slant of the upper thigh is very important for the coxofemoral angulations uh, which are determined by the angle between upper thigh and sciatic bone in the region of sciatic bone are located extensors muscles which are in charge of unbending and <clears throat> it's very obviously that the correct angle close to the 90 degrees will provide the best conditions for the uh, mac, uh, most efficient work of this uh, of this joint and these articulations uh, it is not uh, mentioned here but you can imagine uh, when uh, opposite rear limbs is placed forward then another upper thigh this one creates 90 degree angles between this upper thigh and the iliac bone this angle here are located flexors muscles are responsible for the uh, bending and uh, this uh, room can provide the best place for the location of the flexors so in both situations unbending and bending the coxofemoral angulations are very important if uh, this angle is close to 90 degrees. Here is close to 90 degrees more or less and here as well. So the optimal slants and optimal angulations front and the rear are provided by the uh, postulate to verticals and one conclusion as i promised earlier so you can see the elbow joint is located exactly under the very beginning of the top line and the stifle joint is located exactly under the very end of the top line that's why we have the mobile support of the spine at the beginning and at the end and that's why uh, during uh, arising uh, uh, during this so disturbances during arising from the jumping and falling are softened at this level and this is the additional condition uh, to provide unchanged uh, level of the spinal length of the body and distance between the front and the rear limbs are equal it's very easy to understand if we imagine for the beginning that the um, dog limbs are deprived of any angulations they are like legs of the chair try to imagine and in this case <coughs> distance between so-called legs and length of the body will be exactly the same but in reality 
the body of the dog is moved forward by the system of liver arms from the rear and from the front and they have to be moved forward on the same distance otherwise the strides of the front legs and rear legs will be different and this is bad because for the balance movement the strides should be equal so if they are equal the balanced movement will be provided and the statement about the equality of these two segments will be confirmed so uh, coming back to the very beginning if you remember i have promised that the biomechanical model will give the judges the possibility to increase the objectivity of assessment <coughs> because of the universal referen reference points please take a look uh, you see the dog then you have to examine the dog with your hands and first of all you have to examine the proportions between back loin and sacrum ideally this border is in the middle of this distance and this tuber is the middle of the rest it is very easy to find out middle the human eye is easily tuned in the equilibrium easy or if you do not find it you will immediately say that the for example loin is long too much or just a little or sacrum is short or back is short there are different combinations but basic uh, proportion to one one will give you the uh, universal criterion of the correct ratio between these three to three uh, divisions of the top line divisions of the spinal column uh, beside that when you are evaluating angulations you can see if the elbow joint is placed under the width and if yes then the front angulation is okay is correct and if the knee joint is placed on the tail set the rear angulations are also correct uh, you can look at this green uh, horizontal lines and uh, check if this a pair of joints are located on this line and are placed on the same level or not the same should be considered for this couple and if it is not like that and for example hip joint is higher than this horizontal line you will understand immediately that upper thigh is not long enough and dog is not able to uh, bend stifle uh, correctly to a little bit sit down on the knees uh, beside that um, for the majority of the breeds the elbow joint is in the middle of the distance from the with us to the ground and this is the half of the with us ideally 
for the majority of the breeds. Another half is divided also according to the ratio of one and one. Why? Because shoulder blade and upper thigh, uh, upper arm, sorry, upper arm for the majority of the breeds are of equal length. So that's why of equal slant. This angle and this contrary slant are equal. That's why the vertical proportions are equal. And we can find one more time ratio 2, 1, 1 along the vertical line lowered from the uh, with us. So you have universal reference points. And uh, your visual impressions uh, could be checked with these points before you will say exactly about the specific of the concrete dog you are judging. Uh, for the breeders and selective algorithm directed to the acceleration of the breeding process, progress, I will tell later on after I consider the harmonic model. But before to go to the harmonic model, let me uh, complete uh, the story of biomechanical model. So, this is a so-called pendulum. Uh, you can see red vertical line. The center of gravity is placed here on this vertical line. And uh, it is uh, uh, maybe not so easy, but anyway, it is possible to explain why. Take a look at this vertical line and its base. When dog is trotting, we can uh, consider several aspects. Now we consider what does it mean this vertical line and center of gravity placed here? The legs from the opposite side are converging to the base of this vertical line. Why? Do not forget that this is a center of gravity because it's the most stable position at this stage of movement. Why? Uh, it could be explained easily. Uh, try to imagine that you are in bus, for example. And uh, you have to find out the place where wobbling will be the minimal, where it should be. Of course, at the center of gravity. And here is the same. The minimal wobbling is provided by this condition. This principal name is the principle of uh, converging powers, which belongs to the theoretical mechanics. But for you, it will be enough uh, to understand uh, the reason which appears if the limbs are converging to the base of the vertical line where uh, center of gravity is located. So it was the explanation why the center of gravity is located here. Now, uh, this uh, drawing, we can find out some known things and some unknown. Uh, known things are concerning to 
horizontal lines, green lines, are parallel to each other and placed horizontally. And that's why top line remains level and uh, solid. The limbs uh, create right angle when they are in swing. And it is provided by the boundaries uh, which are these two oblique blue lines and uh, which determine on the boundaries of this limbs swing or limbs span. And uh, the last thing is concerning um, condition of the equilibrium when the rock is landing. You can see this yellow line, yellow vertical line, which connects the eye of the dog and paw of the front leg at the uh, moment of landing or close to it. Uh, the vestibular, vestibular apparatus is located here in the ear. And uh, the eye is a little bit in front of this apparatus. And it provides the equilibrium just a little in advance. This is the criterion of the equilibrium, which could be considered also as the, uh, as the criterion of the extended trot. If the front leg reaches to the base of this yellow line, lowered from the eye. This is the last one, which I was going to tell you about the biomechanical model. And now I'm able to go to the harmonic model. But before, to tell you about this model, I would like to say, say to you something which appears as the question not quite naturally. Why human, without any knowledge, are gifted from the nature with the ability to differ beauty and ugly, no, in our case, dogs, in general, any any forms, in our case, dogs. They do not, don't know anything about the harmony. They don't know anything about the uh, rules of harmony. And nevertheless, they are able to appreciate what they see. How it could be provided? What is the phenomenon of that? Human eye, like a human ear, uh, are tuned uh, to the golden section from the nature. And this gift <coughs> is given from above. And the golden section is the universal form building principle of the harmony. Now it's a time to tell you what does it mean. This is written in Russian, Zolotoye Sichenye, golden section. Principle, which we call now golden section, 
was known from the ancient times. It was known in ancient Egypt, do not forget pyramids. It was well known in the ancient Greece, don't forget Parthenon. Uh, it was very well known in the Renaissance time. And uh, it was well known for the architects, for the sculptures, for the artists in any kind of art, including music. It was well known for engineers, for scientists. Do not forget Kepler, who found out uh, the sunny system planets locations. Uh, there is a lot of examples. And uh, we are concentrated now on the another topic. But if you are interested in details, in the uh, the numbers, the number is in, incredible high, and you can find them in my book. Doc confirmation in the its evaluations, evaluation uh, which is available in UK, in our docs by Vincent Hogan. Uh, very difficult to tell you so briefly about the uh, very uh, deep uh, problem, but I will try. Uh, three hundreds before Christ, the Euclid gave the definition of the of this principle. He called this principle divisions of the segment by extreme and mean ratio, according to which the whole segment to the biggest part, one to x, is the same that the biggest part, x, is to the smallest one, one minus x. This is the proportion, which could be easily transformed into the square equation. <coughs> and you can see here it's positive root. If we calculate this number and take the third approximation, it will be this one. More rough approximation is this one, and the most rough approximation is this one. 0 0.6 or 3 to 5. This is the principle. This principle was considered and described in the book of Luca Pacioli, who was an Italian mathematician, he was a monk scientist, uh, lived in the 16th century and uh, who wrote the book La Proporzia Divina. Sorry. <coughs> Or divine proportion, golden section. In the future, this name became known uh, after Leonardo da Vinci, because Leonardo was the illustrator of this book, and he renamed the golden the La Proporzia Divina to the Sectio Aureo, golden section. And we know this name. Coming back to Luca Pacioli, I have to emphasize that according to his philosophy, uh, when he 
considered this divina proportione, uh, he mentioned 12 properties of this proportion and in his opinion uh, the divina proportione, it's Italian, name was the universal law of the harmony. Four centuries before this uh, persons, Luca Pacioli and Leonardo da Vinci, four centuries before, in Pisa lived Le another Leonardo, Leonardo Fibonacci. He was also a mathematician and he solved the problem uh, which was very far away from our topic. But uh, the solution he found was the sequence. This is the sequence number one in front of you on the screen. And uh, it is very easily built. One, one, two, three initial members. Then one plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight and on. This sequence was modified uh, to this appearance. Uh, each previous number was divided to the next one. You can see one to one is one, one to two is one second, two third, three fifth, five eighth, eight thirteenths, and on. <coughs> and uh, what is extremely important that the limit of this sequence is the same number we saw already here. So we can use two ways to, de to define, to determine the golden section. This way, based on the division of the segment in the extreme and mean ratio, proportion, positive root, and this way, based on the sequence, on Fibonacci sequence. Uh, please take a look. I highlighted in red this number, three to five, the same. And now you can understand that each member of Fibonacci sequence is the uh, approximation of the golden section. In the beginning it is a rough approximation and along the, this sequence it's becoming more and more fine. And uh, uh, for us, three to five will be approximation then we will use, that we will use uh, when looking for the golden section because this rough approximation is quite suitable for us. Because when we are measuring the dogs, we are doing mistakes of the measurements. And these mistakes exceed so-called tail we neglect. <coughs> this is the first conclusion. The next one, in my opinion, is the most important conclusion we can find here. I would call it moment of truth. Please take a look at these three numbers highlighted in red and read in the reverse way. Two, one, one. Now you can understand the value of these numbers, which create ratio two, one, one. And you can understand now why 
namely these numbers are required for the ideal confirmation because they are in charge for the basic tuning to the golden section without these numbers the golden section could not be approached without these numbers the fibonacci sequence could not be built and that's why its limit which is a golden section or perfection this is the same will be not approached <coughs> the same you can see along the vertical line two one one so no now you can understand the postulate number one is the postulate the first postulate not only because of the order but the postulate of the greatest value this is the basic initial tuning to the golden section i said to you that the uh, everything in the world is under the influence of the golden section and this is true and of course the dog confirmation could not avoid the, this influence in, and it didn't avoid now i will tell you about the harmonious proportions uh, that the human eye is in tuned in search of harmony the definition of harmony is based on the golden section and it has two aspects what does it mean harmony this is not only beauty which we uh, can find when looking at the subject in which we are interested it is not only beauty but it is only function the optimal function of this structure <coughs> So, in the main uh, sense, the harmony could be defined as a balance between perfection uh, structure and its optimal functions. Uh, the best example could be egg. The egg which Fabergé took uh, and considered as the symbol of the harmony the egg is built according to the golden section his uh, cross diameter and longitudinal diameter cross and longitudinal are three to five for the eye, egg looks beautiful. But uh, it's uh, extremely important that it is practically impossible to uh, destroy the egg when squeezing it evenly in your hands. So durable is this construction. And this durability is a requirement to protect the best the embryo which is inside so please uh, keep in your mind this example as the illustration of this balance between between beauty and uh, best function the first harmonious proportion is illustrated in uh, this drawing 
depth of the chest to the length of the top line from the first vertebra spinous process to the uh, tail set I have to come back and accentuate that I measure depth of the chest from the breastbone to the top of the shoulders to the uh, this tuber and this is three to five golden section next one please length of the chest to the length of the body is the golden section uh, try to remember the very first um, illustration one o and point six the whole segment to its biggest part is the same as the biggest part to the smallest one so it could be uh, five uh, no for example if it is a five and this is three then it will be eight it could be illustrated by different Fibonacci numbers but now we will use only this three and uh, maybe sometimes only two three to five and this ratio provides a solid body remember the egg now uh, I will use this picture to explain very important uh, thought. Many times when I have asked uh, trainee judges or breeders or judges uh, because of what body of the female is longer than the body of the male the very common answer was oh, because of the loin. Loin of the females is longer but the loin than the loin of males. And this is not true. This is wrong. This is a widespread delusion. Try to remember when we are, we were considering the top line proportions which are indicated here we didn't say anything about the sex it was not important didn't matter it doesn't matter whether is it is the dog or bitch but if this proportion is unchanged for both sexes what is the re reason of the female body lengthening easy the sciatic bone of the females is longer and uh, this is important for the best process of whelping this bone is longer, buttocks are more prominent, and this part is becoming longer. And the ratio between initial parts of this red line which was five to three will be violated the smallest part of this line will increase and that's why the whole proportion will be not anymore five to three because of the lengthening of the buttocks lengthening of the sciatic bones 
And the only way to restore this golden section proportion is the front for the beaches, the four chest will be more pronounced. And then this proportion will be restored and based on the golden section again. So, two things are in charge of the more longer body in the females. More prominent buttocks and more prominent forechest. While the top line will remain of the same length and the same proportions. I told the same length in the comparison to the body length, but more important is that the proportion will be unchanged. Length of the body to the distance between occiput and paw of the hind leg placed behind to the vertical rear pastor is the <coughs> Golden section. Uh, in reality, this point and that point are not placed in the vertical plane parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. And you have the projection. which is parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. Three to five. Uh, when dog is standing, then this proportion is fixed. Three to five. Let us imagine that dog sta uh, starts moving walking, then trotting, then moving by gallop, and uh, this blue line will change its length. But the oscillation of these blue line deviations from this initial length will appear around the, the initial length, which creates, together with the red line, the golden section. So, the golden section will provide the basic level of these oscillations, and all of them will be around this proportion, three to five. Uh, it, it was not necessary to say to you that the length of the body will remain the same either dog is standing or moving. The only diameter length is changing, uh, oscillation, around this length. Excellent, yes. Height at the elbow to the sum of length of the head and neck is the golden section. How it was discovered? What is the reason hidden inside? Uh, Spasibo. Girth of muzzle to the girth of skull is the golden section. And the best illustration uh, could be already mentioned egg. You remember, egg has maximum durability, which is provided by the correct ratio between cross and longitudinal diameters. 
a bite of the dog is provided on maximum if this proportion we can find three to five to five and uh, if the power of the bite should be uh, on extreme uh, level like for bull terrier or borzoi you will immediately find out the egg shape of the, these heads. So, uh, this is the last ammonious proportion. Now, uh, as I promised, I will tell about the tool which could be useful for the breeders when they are looking for the acceleration of their breeding progress. You can say to me, yes, it is nice that you discovered these harmonious proportions. Well, but how could we use them for our uh, practical work? In what way, in which order? And my answer is very simple. You should not do that. Everything is already done if the dog is built according to one one principle. Please listen to me carefully. One, one, two are initial members of Fibonacci sequence along the top line and uh, along the vertical line lowered from the point <coughs> up with us and this is enough the basic tuning of the dog confirmation to the golden section will automatically lead to all harmonious proportions and this is the phenomenon and if you use it you will receive what you are looking for please do not forget that there are two elements loin and upper thigh which are disasters because of the tendency of the loin for lengthening and of upper thigh for shortening. They are able to destroy all harmony immediately if they are not under the control. And the control is the accordance to this principle and accordance to this principle and the accordance to this principle. So, and the offsprings of the dogs, if you your selection is directed to this two one one way, will be very successful of the offsprings will be automatically moved to the golden section meaning. So I wish you a lot of success. And as I promised, I told you how to use it. So, now we can go directly to the standard, first of the Russian Hound and later on to the Russian Pied Hound. Six scent hounds and related breeds. Section 1, one large size, size hounds with working trials is not recognized by, by the FCK by now. Look at this dog. This is an excellent specimen of the Russian hound. Uh, utilization. A hound to work alone in pair or in pack on a hare fox, jackal, and other game. Brief historical summary. The Russian hound is one of the 
oldest hunting breeds in Russia. The first evidence of hunting with the hounds in Russia dates back to the 12th century and descriptions of hound and hunting with them to the beginning of the 16th century. From ancient times, people in Russia hunted elk, roe, deer, wild boars, wolves, lynxes, foxes, hares, with the help of hounds who had a commercial value. The particular importance was given to the big, strong hounds, able and ready to resist wolf that used to destroy livestock, useful game, and caused the serious damage to wild animals in hunting grounds. Uh, Wolfhound packs of hounds were widely used to fight wolf and control its population. In complex dog hunts, which were popular already in 16th century, packs of hounds had a secondary role to search and find beasts and rattle in the field for hunters with the sight hounds. The first written mention of the Russian hounds is found in the Baron Sigismund von Herberstein book, Notes on Moscow, Vienna, 1549. Herberstein was twice in 1517 and 1526 the ambassador of the Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I to the great prince of Moscow, Basil III. Describing the great prince's brilliant and exemplary grand hunt, Herberstein mentions that the hare hunt uh, involving hounds whom to he calls in Latin. We can judge the spread of hounds in Russia in the early 17th century by the letters of Mikhail Fyodorovich, the Tsar from Russian uh, Romanov family, dated 1619. They contained instructions to collect hounds in different regions of the country for the Tsar hunting. According to the archive records of 1730, during the short Emperor Peter II, uh, 1727, 1730, whose main passion was hunting, Russian hounds were more than half of all dogs in the Tsar hunts. The first description of the exterior and the requirements to the Russian hounds type, Russian searching dogs, unable to swamps, are given in the book by the Russian landowner from Tula region, a nobleman, secretary of the Free Economic Society, a writer Vasily Lovshin, perfect gamekeeper, shooter and hunter, with dogs, on knowledge of all gear of the gun and dog hunt, St. Petersburg, 1791. For a long time, the hounds were bred according to the hunt owner's personal taste. The selection was directed mainly on working qualities. The purity of the breed was not observed. By the last third of the 19th century, a native hound still did not have a stable type. Purposeful work on its creation begins in 1874 when the first show of hunting dogs was held in Russia. At the same time, the rules of hounds breeding were developed and Leonid Sabanev was the Russian zoologist, naturalist, bibliophile hunter, hunting and fishing business founder and promoter, nature <coughs> and hunting magazine, creator and editor. He suggested classification of the Russian hounds existing population in the article, how to host 
dog shows and how to perform judging nature and hunting number seven 1879-78 the first standards start to appear in 1881 the founder of the gun hunting with the hounds in Russia breeder and the judge Kishensky described the breed in details under the name Eastern Hound in the article The Choice of Hounds. In 1895, on behalf of the Congress of the Canine Hunters, description of the modern Russian Hounds characteristics features by Belousov and Bibikov is published in the Nature and Hunting magazine. It is, a, it is based on the teaching of by Kishensky, the first breed standard under the name Russian Hound, that was taken later. At the period, uh, the great Prince Nikolai Nikolaevich Romanov creates Persian Grand Prince Hunt, which was existed in 1887 to 1914, and played a special role in the history of the Russian Borzoi breed. <coughs> About one third of the whole population of the Persian hunt were hounds. Hunting trips were held complete dog hunts. Breeding was won on a good level and the best Russian hounds of the late 19th centuries were bred. After 1917 and the civil war hunting with the Russian hounds gets popular. In new social conditions, hounds become gun dogs for private use. Field tests of hounds are held. Such working quality of these breeds as scent, skill, all necessary field qualities presence. Search, ability to find a beast quickly speed with which the hound chases the beast, persistence, ability to follow a beast long and closely, melody and fidelity of the voice, melodically barking dog are developed. In 1925, during the first Old Union Congress of the Sinologist in Moscow, the Russian hound breed standard was modified and approved in new edition. Further amendments were introduced to the standard in 1939 and on December 23, 1980, when it was adapted by the All Union Sinological Council of the USSR. In the 2002, the RKF Presidium approved a new breed standard, edited on April. 8, 2015. The result of breeding is creation of a modern Russian hound breed. It is valued for their legendary characteristics endurance, ability for the vigorous and long-term chasing the beast, and a strong musical voice, figurative constantly transferring from one note to another one, changing in height into different shapes, strong, figurative, without interruption, when each bark is divided into several notes, passing one into another, from discant to bass and back, audible from far away. General appearance. Over medium size, moderately long-bodied, strong, with a strong bone and well-developed dry muscles. It has characteristics beasty or gloomy, severe, resembling wolf appearance that differs it from other breeds. Sloping top line and its manner to carry its head low gives a special resemblance to a wolf. Sexual dimorphism is distinctly pro pronounced. 
Important proportions. The length of the muzzle to the length of the skull ratio is one to one. Rump height is one or two centimeters less or equal to the height at widths. The length of the body exceeds the height at widths uh, at five to six percent in males and seven to ten percent in females. Height at elbow, elbow joint is equal to half of the height at widths. Behavior temperament, calm, balanced. A head of medium size, lean, wedge-shaped, moderately wide in cheeks. A cranial region, skull, elongated, flat, superciliary ridges and occipital, occipital crest are hardly visible. Skin is tightly fitting. Stop. Smooth, but marked. Facial region. Nose. Oh, we have three quarters ahead. Let us read the text. Uh, nose, wide, large, somewhat protruding forward, black, muzzle, wedge-shaped, the profile, the profile lines of the forehead and muzzle are parallel. Now we will see the pictures where it is visible. Anyway, anyway, we can see that the profile lines of the skull and the bridge of nose are parallel. And uh, the stop is smooth but marked. Uh, lips, uh, lean, closely fitting, fully pigmented. Uh, this is not the best example. You can see that the under jaw, jaw should be, yes, this is the best, uh, there are best examples. Uh, parallel lines, uh, smooth, uh, but still visible stop. Uh, lips, uh, lean closely fitting, fully pigmented, here and here. Uh, jaws, teeth, Jaws are strong, teeth are wide, strong, and large. This is a bite, complete the formula. Absence of P1 and M3, as well as the broken or dislodged teeth that do not interfere with the bite definition, do not affect the assessment of the dog. Cheeks, flat and lean. Uh, Eyes of medium size, almost shaped, obliquely set, uh, dark brown or, or brown. Eyelids lean, closely fitting, fully pigmented. Ears hanging, triangle in shape, not big short rather than of medium length, set somewhat higher than the eye level, moderately thin, closely fitting, neck of medium length, <coughs> set low at 32, 35 degrees muscular and dry. You can compare 
the length of the neck and the length of the head. And it is written here that the length is medium, which is according to this equality. It is the definition. A body, top line, smooth, slightly sloping from the withers to the base of tail. With us, marked long. Uh, back straight, strong, brown, and muscular. Loin, short, broad, slightly arched, muscular. Croup, broad of medium length, slightly sloping. Muscled. Uh, chest broad, deep, reaching to the elbows or slightly lower, which means elbow alna or elbow joint. Alna is a bit higher, elbow is a bit lower. Let us analyze what is in the standard. This is nothing about the length of the back, but it is noticed that the loin should be short and the chest should be deep. If you remember, I would like to remind you that the depth of the chest depends on its length. Long chest means that it is, its upper part is long. Upper part is the thoracic, thoracic part of the spine or actual back. So, we know norms, we know canons, and we can analyze the standard provisions and understand that they are, they are in accordance for the universal ratio. Relatively long back, which is half of the top line, short loin, which is two times shorter than the back, and the rump or sacrum, of the same length. A requirement of uh, the rather short sac doesn't contradict the requirement of the rather long croup. Sacrum, it is upper part of the croup. And the croup consists of this part of the spinal column, which is the sacrum, three fused vertebra and pelvic bones. And uh, the length of the sciatic bone is in charge of the final length of the croup. So, these two requirements of the short sacrum and the rather long croup are not contradictive. The requirement of the loin to be slightly arched and broad and muscular are also not accidental, really. Uh, loin should be uh, broad, but it could be broad because of muscles in the nature the transverse, transverse processes are not so long. Loin, could, uh, loin of the dog could be brought because of the well-developed muscles. I have to repeat that the transfer um, processes in this region are not so long uh, they uh, are not so long as by horse, and the loin could be brought when 
the muscles in this region are well developed. That's why in the mention, in the standard is mentioned that the loin should be well muscled. And in this case, short and wide loin could, sorry, could withstand wobbling of the croup, unlike the narrow loin. And the loin should be slightly arched, because its role in the movement is to be a spring, and it should be ready immediately to tra transmit the oscillations, the motive thrusts from the rear to the front without any delay. That's why it should be slightly arched. Chest, Bro broad, deep reaching to the elbows or uh, slightly lower. The elbows, the elbow joints are the most weak uh, joints of the dog. Because you remember that the uh, four legs are attached to the body only uh, by the muscles and tendons. And uh, uh, the elbow joints uh, are most weak joints. And if they uh, are close to the breastbone, it will give them support to remain the correct directions, either when standing backwards or when moving forward and backward. So support on the breastbone is the cause which provides stability and right position of the elbow joints. Oh, underline and belly. Uh, belly is slightly tucked up. Sorry. У меня реакция не могу через три часа. Uh, slightly tucked up, higher than the breast, breastbone. Breastbone and belly. Tail. Thick at the base, getting gradually thinner to the tip. It reaches the hocks in the length, or more often it is two th to three centimeters shorter. When at rest, it hangs down. In excitement, the, the dog carries it above the top line. Uh, limbs. General appearance. With a strong bone, muscular, seen from this front straight and parallel. Shoulder blade. Long oblique. Upper arm. Long oblique, almost equal in length with the shoulder blade. Front angulation is excellent pronounced, which is quite uh, uh, normal because the dog is uh, moderately long bodied and the angulations should be. Uh, quite well pronounced to provide the length of the strides according to the body length. Elbows. Close to the body, directed backwards. Forearm. Strong of medium length. Uh, Oval in the cross section. Rised. Or carpus. Firm seen from front 
are in the line with the forearm. Pastern, firm, slightly slanted. Forefeet and hind feet, arched. Uh, oval with a tight twos, nails directed to the ground. Just a moment. Hindquarters. General appearance with strong bone and well developed muscles. Seen from behind, straight and parallel. Stifle. Uh, sorry. Upper thigh. Uh, moderately long. Uh, broad and muscled, stifle firm, well bent, a lower thigh, moderately long, a hock joint, firm, well pronounced, a rare pasta, almost vertical. Um, one special explanation uh, about the upper thigh and the lower thigh. It is written that they, they are of the moderate length. In one of my lectures I told you that the term moderate is not quite adequate to the Russian term umerin. And there is no other adequate term, maybe in some ways reasonable, reasonably long. Because the term umerinly, based on the root mera, which means measure. <coughs> and what is the measure in this case? The measure of the length either of the upper thigh or, the, or on the, of the second thigh is that the dog should have the possibility uh, slightly sit down on the knees and create correct uh, coxofemoral angulations. Uh, I have to remind you, this angle should be 90 degrees. And if it is not like that, and the length of the upper thigh is not enough, then dog will be overbuilt. Because the hip joint will uh, go up in standing, and more often when dog is moving. And the only correct length of the upper thigh can provide the whole constructions so that the overbuilt will not appear. One more time length and slant of the upper thigh is very important for the coxofemoral angulation close to 90 degrees for the best transmission of the motive thrust from the rear to the front. And this length uh, can give the possibility for the dog to a little bit sit down on the, the styles to bend this articulation. And uh, in this case, the uh, overbuilt construction will be blocked. And the moderate length of the second thigh or lower thigh uh, is because of this upper thigh length, which are in principle, 
equal. And uh, uh, on the level, uh, we can say that the movement is quite nice. Nice top line, solid level. Uh, uh, balance, uh, the movement is balanced and uh, the whole dog is, looks, uh, is looking quite nicely. But uh, to describe the, on the uh, professional level, we have to go inside of this dog. And let us see another pictures. Top line is firm and level. It is solid without any visible any visible divisions of the top line. <coughs> the eye cannot find out the borders between the back loin and sacrum. Everything is very solid and the, the uh, actual top line is level, which is correct. Next. The front stride and the rear stride are equal. Next. The uh, limbs from the opposite side are converging to the base of the vertical line lowered from the point of intersection or from the pendulum, axis of pendulum, uh, where at this vertical line, the center of gravity is located. You can see that the limbs, that the limbs uh, swing or limbs span is inscribed in this right angle. You can see that the uh, pairs of joints are upper pair and lower pair lie on two horizontal lines. And finally, you can find out that the eye and the paw <coughs> of the front leg uh, at the moment of landing or close to it uh, lie on one vertical line which uh, determines the uh, extended trot. So, everything could be found here at this picture. And uh, let us read what is written in the standard. Movement are free, energetic, balanced, with good extension, balanced, look at the equality of the strides. Good extension is determined by this yellow line. Uh, gall gallop or well-extended trot are typical gates while searching uh, a beast. On, change, on chasing, it is a gallop, alternate with a trot, on a forced movement deceleration. Skin, thick, elastic, without notice, notice, noticeably developed subcutaneous tissue or folds. Coat, straight, short, uh, four to five centimeters, thick and coarse on touch with well-developed undercoat. Coat on the head, ears and limbs is shorter than on the rest of the body. It is somewhat longer at the back or thighs, but without feathering. Coat is the longest, longest on the neck, where it forms a well-developed ruff. On the tail, coat is of medium length, thick, straight, a little shorter to the tip of the tail. Color. Reddish sable, from reddish ginger to reddish gold with the dark hair ends. 
pale sable, wolf color, saddle, black or grizzled saddle with a reddish or pale tan. Any of the above mentioned colors may be lightening symmetrically, white lightening in the areas where they may be tan. Small white spot on the chest and pose is permissible in any color. Size. Height at width 58 to 68 centimeters for males. 55 to 65 centimeters for the females. Serious folds. Height more than 2 centimeters lower than the standard. Obviously short on high on legs. Coarse, dumpish or light built. Dumpish, too big head with a broad skull, abrupt stop, too developed superciliary ridges, not too, too bulging forehead, bulging cheeks, blunt muzzle, snubby nose, partially depigmented nose, too big, low set, partially raised on the cartilage or folded ears, ears with the rounded tips, covered with a long coat, light, small or sunken eyes, missing of one or more incisor, missing of four or and more primulas, P2, P3 and lower P4, missing of at least <coughs> One upper P4, fully developed or barrel chest, crooked forearms, two significantly turned in or out, two soft pasterns, flat, splayed or long hair, feet, cow hocks, barrel hocks, definitely sickle hocks, unbalanced movement crooked or carried sideways tail, curled into half a ring tail. Bright reddish spots, too many speckles, big white spots on the chest, white limbs over rice or hog joints, dark spots on the forehead, ears, lips and below ear, eyes. Shaggy coat, absence on the undercoat. Disqualifying faults. Any dog showing aggressive or overly shy temperament as well as the physical or the behavior abnormalities should be disqualified. Color, eye color that don't correspond to the standard. Any bite except the scissor bite. Absence of the canine tooth or M1 or M2 molar. And that's it. This is the standard of the Russian hound. We have some pictures to look at them and uh, analyze what we see compared to the standard. So uh, this picture you can see typical uh, appearance for this breed uh, long bodied dog, deep chested, strong in bones, with a low set and low carried neck, long head with a parallel profile planes, with a slightly marked but still visible stop with a black nose, a little bit protruding before, uh, protruding before the lips, uh, wedge-shaped head, dark pigmentation of the lips, nose and eyelids, uh, with a deep chest reaching to the elbow level, in this case we can see the um, Alna. Uh, excellent developed, excellent pronounced front angulations. And in this case, uh, the rear part of the dog, including croup, 
and rare quarters, hind quarters, is not that perfect. <coughs> a rump is almost higher than the withers, and this is because of the short upper thigh, and that's why straightening angulations of the area. Let us compare with a picture, with a drawing we uh, presented to you before. Type is the same, but you can see the difference. Top line is solid and slightly sloping from the withers to the tail set. Excellent uh, pronounced shoulder angulations. You can see that the elbow joint is exactly under the withers. You can see excellent angulations of the rear limbs. And this is because of the rather long upper thigh and well pronounced stifle, which is a well bend. And that's why the rump is a little bit lower. According to the main idea of the sloping, slightly sloping line from the sloping top line from the withers to the tail set. This is the perfect construction. And this is made by the uh, by the artist. This is the picture of the champion, uh, the show, uh, so all Soviet Union show held in 1935. The rock was born in 1928. <coughs> you can see uh, how uh, changed the dog construction since that time. But anyway, the most typical feature, low set and low carried neck is presented. Of course, dog is overbuilt, we cannot see front, uh, front angulations and only can see the rear angulations, we are, which are uh, sufficient. But in general, the picture can give you the idea, the way uh, of the development of the breed. Slightly long-bodied, uh, parallel, plane, parallel planes of the head, but a bit snipey muzzle. Uh, top line is a little bit sloping and angulations are quite okay. In this case, dog could be a bit uh, more long bodied. Top line could be better. You can see with this a bit too soft back, a bit too uh, high rump, deep chest, rather high set neck, uh, head is Long and uh, strong parallel planes are presented, a bit too wet lips and uh, somewhat developed uh, dewlop. Uh, correct, okay is the angulation uh, of the front legs and uh, moderately angulated behind. This is a long bodied Overbuilt and a bit short legged. Uh, I don't see. This is the bitch. Bitch. Uh, strong enough in bones. Honestly, a bit too light. Uh, profile lines are not parallel. Uh, too uh, pronounced stop with the two. Uh, developed superciliary ridges, uh, developed with us, uh, some depression after the with us, and the uh, rump is a bit too high. Uh, nevertheless, uh, chest is long, you can see the length, and uh, because of this um, shadow, you can 
understand how long is loin, rather short, this is correct. Uh, chest could be deeper. A bit too straight in front, you can see where is the elbow joint and where is the withers. This is the vertical line, the lower it from the withers. <coughs> and the elbow joint is in front of this vertical line. Uh, and excellent angulated behind. This is the picture of this beach. Long-bodied beach. Overbuilt. Uh, okay in the depth of the body. Uh, okay in both. Strong enough. Uh, we don't see exactly the head, but it seems that muzzle should be stronger. Uh, too much rounded skull. Anyway, dark eyes, obliquely set, excellent pigmentation of the protruding nose, black nose, uh, black eyelids, develop uh, top line should be stronger. Chest is rather deep, almost reaches to the ulna elbow level. Straight in front, elbow joint and with us, and straight behind. Medium long body, high leg bitch. Uh, should be stronger in bones. Light head with a rounded skull, uh, muzzle should be stronger, quite correct stop, uh, rather dry neck, uh, should be carried a bit lower. Uh, withers are not pronounced, quite strong top line, uh, shallow chest, straight in front. Upper arms are almost vertical. Uh, moderately angulated behind. In front of you is another breed, Russian Pied Hound. This is also drawing. Uh, sorry. Позвоните Ире Владимировне, у меня лекция. Uh, before to read the standard, uh, I will illustrate you this dog from inside, according to the two models. I will not explain one more time everything which was uh, given before, because I will uh, textually repeat everything, but nevertheless, we will see the drawings according the uh, according to the biomechanical model, and then to harmonic model. This is this, um, uh, how does it look like from inside skeleton of the dog. Now, uh, please give me the drawing uh, with all elements of the biomechanical model, please. As you can see, everything is textual, textually repeated. Two, one, one, top line proportions. 90 degrees angle at the axis of the pendulum. Center of gravity placed at the vertical line, lowered from the point of intersection. Two horizontal lines, which determine locations of uh, humerus scapula and hip joint, as well as the elbow joint and knee joint. Two red lines, which determine the principle of the two verticals, when elbow joint is located exactly under the top of withers, 
and the stifle joint is located under the tail set. Uh, and uh, besides that, you can see that the vertical proportions are the same. Elbow joint is in the middle of this distance. Hemoscapular joint is placed at the level which divides into two equal parts the rest, the depth of the chest, and that's why these vertical projections of the shoulder blade and the upper arm create, together with the two, uh, the same ratio to one, one. Uh, very uh, briefly, we will look at them. Principle of two vertical lines. Следующую с наклонной линией вверха. Ну пусть это будет. Principle of the the uh, <laughs> This is the amendment to the principle of two verticals. А теперь, пожалуйста, другую картинку по поводу. We saw it already one more time. Illustration of the location of the center of gravity. This is a, a dog on the move. Dog is trotting. One more time, you can see the skeleton of the four limbs and the hind limbs when dog is trotting. Uh, all details uh, of the trotting, I will not repeat, you remember, I believe. And uh, you can see, as I said before, both breeds belong to that majority of the breeds which is in the accordance to the uh, biomechanical model. Biomechanical model is valid for this majority and uh, for both hound breeds we consider today. Uh, of course, it is visible that in case of Russian uh, pied hound, the construction is different. The body is shorter, and that's why the strides are shorter. Because to move the shorter body forward, uh, the dog needs adequate length of the length of the steps. Uh, sometimes I already told you that uh, in this case it landed is three to five. And if the body is shorter, this distance is also also short. Okay, now harmonic model of the dog depth of the body to the length of the top line is the golden section length of the chest to the length of the body is the golden section length of the body to the length of the diameter is the golden section height at elbow joint to the sum of head and neck length is the golden section and the ratio between girth of muzzle and girth of skull is golden section. So everything is valid. Either we consider the Russian pied hound uh, regarding the biomechanical model or regarding harmonic, harmonic model. Everything works. Everything is valid. Good. Uh, now uh, I will find out the text of the standard. Read it. 
and uh, uh, we will analyze everything. Origin of Russia, Group 6, Section 1-1, large sized house, with working trials, is not recognized by the FCI by now. Uh, utilization, a hound to work in a pack of large game, especially on the wolf, but also for hunting in pair and alone on fox, jackal and hare. <coughs> Brief historical summary. The history of the breed Russian Pied Hound starts at the end of the 18th century. Emperor Peter III signs a special manifest after which a complex dog hunt gets popular among Russian noblemen. At such a hunt, hounds were to chase off a beast to a slight, uh, so, sorry, to a sight hound pack. Numeron, numerous offsprings of the native Russian hounds were distinguished by strong built working qualities, especially sand and unusually strong, amazingly beautiful melodical voices. But not always they possessed good conformation and were often not obedient and unfriendly in a pack. To develop this type of hunting in Russia, in the late of 18th century, hounds from Europe and England were imported. They went a hunt silently, silently. They kept silence. Had a pronounced breed type, bright, noticeable in the field color, were innately delicate and easy to train. They also had many qualities valuable for the long chase, including physical health, provided by a harmonious structure. Thus, individual representatives of the foxhounds and stag hounds, deer hounds, appeared in local kennels and hunts. They influenced the formation of very different types of packs. So preconditions for the later selection, segregation and stabilization of livestock appeared. In the 19th century, 20th centuries, the work on the breed creation became purposeful focused. Such important breeding centers as Glebovsky Pack, owned by Glebov, and Berezdikovsky Pack, which belonged to Berezdikov, appeared. The latter was the basis for the Tsar Ganchina Hunt Foundation. In Grand Duke's Nikolai Nikolaevich Romanov, Great Prince Persian Hunt, the bred bright colored Russian Pied House, <coughs> on a par along with the Russian Hounds. Their purpose was to get elegant, well visible in the forest hounds of strong build that would be endurant, fierce to wolf, but friendly in a pack. At the same time, the new breed had to preserve the best qualities of Russian hounds, scent, strong, musical voice, and the skill of chasing. The task was solved by the selection of appropriate specimens from Russian hounds packs and a curate breeding foxhounds imported from England and the subsequent selection of the got offsprings. At hunting dog shows held in Russia since 1874, 
packs of hounds called Anglo-Russian crosses were exhibited. The first breed standard was approved in 1925 by the first Old Union Congress of the Sinologists as the standard of Anglo-Russian hound. Since the breed develops by itself without outer bloods, in the following periods, some amendments were introduced to the standard. Russian Pied Hound got its uh, present breed named in 1947. And in 1980, the standard of the Russian Pied Hound was approved by the All Union Sinological Council of the Ministry of the uh, Agriculture of the USSR. RKF Presidium approved the new breed standard uh, in 2002 and amendments were introduced in 2015. The result of many years' work is the modern type of Russian pied, pied hound, which is distinguished worker in the pack, including on a wolf. And working alone and in pair, and it's up with other breeds in chasing hare, fox, and jackal. General appearance over medium size, slightly long body, strong, with strong bone and well developed muscles, sexual dimorphism is distinctly pronounced. Important proportions. The length of the muzzle is equal to the length of the skull. This is the general appearance. Uh, the length of the body uh, exceeds the height at, at the width at 2 to 4 percent in males and 3 to 5 percent and uh, in females. I would like to draw your attention. Slightly long-bodied dog in this breed and the uh, numbers uh, have to uh, have to emphasize that the uh, this lengthening is just a little because deviation at two to four percent in the body length matches the square bodied dog so it is or square bodied dog or just slightly long bodied. This is the reason. Two to four percent lengthening of the body in males and uh, three to five percent lengthening of the body in females. Just a little. That's why. You can see immediately the difference between the pied hound, Russian pied hound, and its uh, forerunner and uh, related relatives, related breed, Russian hound. Height at elbow is equal to the half of the height at the with us. So, the dog looks a little bit leggy, but it is the optical uh, effect because of the white color here. And uh, the eye reacts at the uh, dark saddle. Uh, later on, with a skeleton, this visual impression, this perception will be 
different. Height at ramp is one to two centimeter less or equal to the height at width. Uh, behavior and temperament. Behavior, balanced. Cranial region. Cranial region. Uh, elongated, rather capacious, but not broad. Superciliary ridges and occipital crest are hardly visible. Slightly visible, almost invisible. And the um, uh, occiput part is slightly rounded. Skin is closely fitting. Stop is smooth, but still visible. Facial region. Nose is wide, large, black. Muzzle in profile has a rectangular shape. The profile lines of skull and muzzle are, are parallel. Lips. Closely fitting, well pigmented, upper lip fully overlaps the lower jaw. Jaws, teeth. Jaws are strong. Teeth are white, strong and large. Scissor bite. Full dental formula. Absence of P1 and M3, as well as broken or dislodged teeth that do not interfere with the definition of the bite. <coughs> do not affect the assessment of the dog. Cheeks, flat and dry. Eyes, of medium size, slightly rounded, slightly obliquely set, dark brown or brown. Eyelids, dry, closely fitting, fully pigmented. Ears, hanging, triangular in shape with the rounded tips. A uh, rather thin, not long, closely fitting to the cheese, cheeks, set a bit higher than the higher level. A small fold is permissible. Neck, of medium length, set at 40 to 45 degrees, muscular and dry. Uh, neck of medium length, muscular and dry. Look, this is the neck length, this is the head length. They are practically of the same length. Uh, body, top line. Smooth, slightly sloping with this, um, sloping from the width to the base of the tail. Uh, with us, well pronounced of medium length. Back, straight, strong, broad, and uh, muscular. Loin, short, broad, and uh, muscled. Croup, broad, slightly sloping. Muscular. Chest. Broad, deep, reaching to the elbows or a little lower. This is the elbow ulna. Oh. Ribs are rounded. Bottom line and belly. Belly slightly tucked up, higher than the breast bone. Uh, tail, thick at base, sable shaped, getting gradually thinner to the tip, 
it reached the hogs in length or two or three centimeters shorter. In excitement on chasing a beast, the dog carries it sharply up. Limbs, four quarters, general appearance, straight, lean with a good bone and muscles, seen from the front straight and parallel, height at elbow is half of the height at withers, elbow joint, elbow ulna is a little bit higher. Uh, shoulder blade, <coughs> long oblique, upper arm, long, rather oblique, almost the same, uh, of the same length with the shoulder blade, good front angulation, uh, elbow tight to the body, uh, directed strictly backwards, forearm strong of medium length, uh, oval in the cross section, priced, firm, seen from front, are in the line with the forearm. Uh, four feet, uh, sorry, pastern, firm, almost vertical. Four feet and hind feet. Arched, oval, with a tight tooth, nails directed to the ground. Hind quarters. General appearance. With strong bones and well-developed muscles. Seen from behind, straight and parallel, upper thigh, moderately long, broad and muscular, stifle, firm, well bent, lower thigh, moderately long, hog joint, firm, well pronounced, rear pastor, almost vertical, Gait, movement are free, energetic, well extended, balanced with good covering. Gallop or wide trot is a typical characteristic gait while searching a beast. On chasing, it is a gallop, changing into trot on a forced movement deceleration. What should I say to you in the comparison for the Russian hound? It is not so long-bodied as the Russian hound. This is the first difference. The most typical difference is the set and carriage of the neck, which in case of Russian hound uh, is low, resembling wolf. And uh, the all appearance uh, resembles wolves also because of the beastly appearance, which is not typical for the Russian pied hound. <clears throat> head has another shape. The shape of muzzle is rectangular. Angulation, angulations both front and the rear are not so pronounced like in case of the Russian hound. And uh, it is uh, quite obviously because Russian hound, as I told you already, is long-bodied, rather long-bodied dog, and it needs rather long steps to move 
to remove this body. And the body of the Russian pied hound is much shorter. That's why angulations are not so pronounced and the strides or steps are not so long. But anyway, uh, the whole constructions, the whole construction, the entire conformation either of Russian hound or of Russian pied hound uh, match the models by mechanical and harmonic. Principles are the same. Proportions, I mean top line proportions and vertical proportions are the same. Principle of the locations of the joints, el, um, humerus scapula, hip joint, and elbow and stifle joint, the location is similar. Location of the elbow joint and knee joint are similar. So principles are the same and uh, harmonious proportions are the same. Uh, maybe we will look one more time at the dog on the move with all lines. Limbs from the opposite side are converging to the base of the vertical line lowered from the axis of the pendulum where uh, the center of gravity is located. Uh, pairs of joints are located uh, according to the two horizontal lines. Uh, limbs span, limbs swing, inscribes in the uh, boundaries, boundaries um, created by the uh, pendulum and uh, a vertical line connects the eye and paw of the front leg at the moment of landing or close to it. This line connects eye and paw of this front leg. So everything is in function. So you can use this principle uh, when uh, you are uh, when you are in charge to evaluate the dog when it is standing or moving. So uh, let me. Go on. Uh, skin is thick, elastic, without uh, folds. Coat, straight, short, about four to five centimeters. Thick and coarse on touch, with well-developed undercoat. Coat on the head, ears and limbs is shorter than on the rest of the body. It is a somewhat longer on the neck color and uh, on the back of thighs, but without feathering. On the tail coat is of medium length, thick, straight, a little shorter to the tip of the tail. Color, reddish sable or black saddle and white. Saddle with white parts, reddish red parts on saddle. A reddish sable with a grizzle saddle and white. Saddle with a white parts. Reddish sable and white. Red and gold and orange with the white parts. In all colors, there must be white belly, tip of the tail, the inner and lower parts of the limbs, 
above the hock and rice joints. Insignificant speckles are permissible. Head is reddish. It may be white spots on the forehead and the muzzle. Some darkening on the temples arrows, so-called arrows, are permissible. Height at withers, males, 58, 68, females, 55, 65. Severe faults, height more than two centimeters lower than the standard. Obviously short or too high on legs. Coarse, dumpish, or light built. Obvious light bone or undeveloped muscles. Significant big faults on head and neck. Dumpish, heavy head, short, and snubby muzzle. Significantly pronounced Roman nose. Abrupt stop. Partially depigmented nose. Too large or too small ears. Low set ears. Folded ears. Partially raised on cartilage. Ears covered with elongated coat. Light, small or sunken ears. Missing of at least one or more incisor. Missing of four and more premolars, P2, P3, and lower P4. <coughs> Missing of any upper P4. Poorly developed or barrel-shaped chest. Crooked forearms. Significantly turned in or out, or out twos. Two slanted sloping pastels. Sorry, to slanted pastels, cow hogs, barrel hogs, sickle hogs, unbalanced movement, crooked or carried sideways tail, too much feathering, too many speckles in color, as well as a reddish, reddiness lower than the hog and rice joints, wavy coat, absence of undercoat. Disqualifications. Any dog showing ag aggressive or overly shy temperament, as well as physical or behavioral abnormalities, should be disqualified. Color. Eye color that doesn't correspond to the standard. Any deviations from the scissor bite. Absence of any canine tooth or M1 or M2. That's it. This is the stand. So, I uh, accentuated the difference between these two breeds. I have to say something about the difference between Russian Pied Hound and the Fox Hound. <clears throat> it is very difficult to say uh, in full details because the standard of the foxhound is very short without the descriptions of many important details of many important things. Uh, but in general, the difference uh, is the next one. The foxhound is more elegant than the Russian pied hound. And this is obviously because of the influence of its forerunner, I mean Russian hound. Uh, format of the body is similar. Shape of the head is very similar. Uh, but in the behavior, this is a difference. Uh, 
The foxhound is very friendly dog. And uh, the Russian pied hound, uh, how should I say it in English? Let me think. Uh, is a bit more reserved. And another important thing which should be in focus of your attention is the uh, style of hunting. Uh, I have emphasized that they are hunting uh, silently without barking and the Russian white hounds are barking dogs when they are hunting and this quality was especially selected and fortunately inherited of the uh, foreigners this is the difference a little bit uh, difference um, is in the height but uh, in some ways, uh, this uh, uh, similarity uh, could be found out by another example. I mean, the Russian European Laika and Karelian Beer Dog, also. In many things, they are similar. And you have to know exactly the differences not to be confused so now it's a time it's a turn to watch some photos this is the almost profile of the head this is a nice head in general the only lips could be drier could be better uh, could be more tight to the uh, jaws. No, especially at the corner of the lips. Uh, parallel planes, equal length, dark oblique set, obliquely set eyes of a dark brown color, black nose with excellent pigmentation, same pigmentation of the lips, and eye rims, uh, rather high set ears, close to the cheeks. Uh, develop, neck should be dry. And uh, uh, color of the head is very typical, as well as the expression. All, uh, this, there are photos of the older dogs. In the period when the type well, uh, was not uh, uh, selected. You can see here uh, the very mixture of the both breeds. Long bodied, uh, overbuilt, high legged, with a light head and a snipy muzzle, straight in front, enough angulated in the array and sloping group. Uh, also, you can see where is the last rib. And you can understand how long is was the loin. This is an example of the moderately long-bodied dog with a rather small and light head with a snipey muzzle, overbuilt, uh, deep enough in the body, enough angulated in the front and straight behind. And here is the pack. And. Uh, so, one more uh, photo of the pack, and you can see at that time, it was at Tsar time, as you can see, that the dogs were much more coarse than the modern uh, Russian pied hounds in type and in conformation, they were very mixture and with a big 
influence of the Russian helm. Even the color they have inherited from the foxhound. Long-bodied, deep-chested, rather heavy dog, with a strong head, parallel planes, rather deep stop, rectangular shape of the muzzle, excellent front angulation, excellent rear angulation. In general, this is a rather heavy and deep-chested dog in the comparison to the Russian Pied Hound. Uh, this is a, a slightly long-bodied dog, deep-chested, strong in bones, and uh, with a lot of substance. The head is uh, long enough with, with a rounded skull, enough pronounced stop, and somewhat snipey muzzle. Correct angulations, both, and in type is very difficult to recognize the Russian pine hound, still mixture. Uh, type is closer to the modern type. Катюш, мне так трудно. Картинки прыгают. То туда, то обратно. Давайте пока остановимся на черном. Нет. На этом остановимся на черно-белом варианте. Here's the moderately long-bodied, deep-chested, length of the forelegs is enough, and a lot of substance. Substance. Head is rather massive, long enough, with a bit rounded skull, almost, almost parallel planes, almost rectangular shape of the muzzle. Lips should be drier, and neck is set and carried. Not typical to the Russian pied hound. It is. It would be typical for the Russian hound, and <coughs> of course, this is the old-fashioned dog, bitch. Uh, belong to the time uh, when the uh, breed time was not clearly selected. Some a bit soft back. Correct angulations both, but type is the intermediate type. Color is typical for the Russian pied, but not type in general. Shorter in the body than the previous one, with the correct vertical proportions. Massive, deep chested. Rather strong in bones. Uh, head is uh, uh, massive, rather long, with a rectangular shape of the muzzle. Uh, almost flat over skull. Long and uh, straight uh, bridge nose. Large nose. Uh, Neck of medium length with a dewlop, pronounced with us, uh, somewhat soft back, overbuilt construction, rump is too high, sloping croup, the chest is deep, enough pronounced in front, enough developed for chest. Uh, uh, Almost correct front angulations, and somewhat straight behind. You can see the enough. The stifles are bent, not enough. They are more typical for the modern type. You can see it is immediately visible, but a bit too long bodied. Appearance is quite typical. But in this case, by the male, two developed cheekbones and two rounded um, skull in the region of the occiput.
much we cannot describe these dogs exactly because of the angle of picturing. I see the question from Niki Wiedehofer. Given the same height and the pied lighter and the weight compared to the Russian hounds, of course, because the Russian hounds are stronger in the bones and uh, longer in the body. In this case, type is quite modern, but not confirmation. Too long-bodied. And uh, please <coughs> remember that it is almost square-bodied dog. Too long-bodied. Vertical proportion is correct. Uh, uh, bones are quite strong. Uh, head is long uh, with a correct shape of the muzzle, a little bit too wet lips in the region of the corners. Um, almost uh, parallel uh, planes, a bit too soft stop. Uh, nicely high set neck developed with us uh, level top line uh, to the uh, elect tubers and to sloping group uh, chest could be deeper you can see this is the elbow alna and uh, the breastbone uh, is a bit too shallow a bit uh, not uh, reach uh, exactly to the uh, level of the ulna. Straight in front, correctly angulated behind. Uh, correct color and patterns. A uh, typical expression, but too wide in cheeks and too rounded in the skull, in the region of the occiput. Uh, yes, should be more close to the cheeks and with some uh, a bit too much uh, pronounced folds. But anyway, large nose of black color, black colored lips uh, in some parts only partially rather dark eyes, uh, fitting eyelids and the pigmented eye rims, uh, typical uh, color and patterns. Um, this is the, it would be quite nice if not so long in body, long bodied, with the correct vertical proportions, I mean height at the elbows and elbows and uh, depth of the chest solid body nice head with a parallel uh, planes and the correct stop this is the superciliary ridge visible but stop actual stop is correct uh, rather high set neck, could be set a bit higher, developed uh, long with us, correct top line, which is solid and smoothly, smoothly uh, uh, and smooth, with a slightly sloping group and correct tail set, excellent developed chest and fore chest, Correct angulations in front, you can see, with us and elbow joint. Excellent angulated behind. The only length of the body is too much, especially because it is the maze. Uh, correct colors and patterns. You remember this part of the standard when uh, it is a time of chasing the dog is moving by gallop somewhat long bodied uh, with uh, some shallow chest 
strong enough in bones, a bit too light in general head, with a slightly rounded skull, and uh, enough pronounced stop, straight uh, bridge of nose, uh, a bit too light muzzle, even the shape is quite rec rectangular. Uh, a bit too low set neck, with a slightly pronounced, no, 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 not yet. Katyush, верните, пожалуйста. Да. Rather strong back, a bit too arched, loin, as it should be, and too sloping crook. Uh, shallow chest, doesn't reach the level of the elbow ulna. Straight in front, correctly angulated behind. Color is correct, as well as the patterns, the distributions. Uh, almost square-bodied male, uh, deep enough in the body, strong in bones, head is large with a rounded skull and too long, not uh, distinctly uh, uh, pronounced, marked uh, stop. Uh, muzzle is almost of a rectangular shape, a bit too wet lips. Uh, at this picture, neck is set and carried low. Maybe it is the moment, I don't know. But I described only what I see. With this should be much more better developed. Strong back, short, slightly arched loin, a bit too sloping croup. Chest should be deeper, much deeper. Correct front angulations, look at the joint and the withers, and correct rear angulations, look at the stifle and tail set. Somewhat long-bodied, strong, overbuilt, I don't see is if it's a dog or bitch. Probably bitch. Probably bitch. Probably. Yes. Somewhat uh, overbuilt bitch. Deep chested. Ra a rather small head. Two high set ears. Which do not are not close to the cheeks. Uh, anyway, the expression is quite typical. Good pigmentation of the nose, lips and eye rims. Nothing about the neck. Uh, slightly developed with us. Depression. Uh, rather long loin. This is the last rib. And this is the iliac tuber. Uh, somewhat sloping croup, uh, correctly angulated behind. Um, not harmoniously built dog. Our cycle is over. I was trying to do all my best and uh, hope that in many things I clarified uh, some difficult points which are important to the correct interpretation of the standards. One more time, I would like to thank you for your coming, for your interest in the Russian native breeds, either recognized by the FCI or not recognized yet. But uh, these breeds illustrate our sinological culture, which has a, a very long and deep roots. And uh, welcome. One more time, if we will tell you something new. But for now, 
our topic is over. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, should you have any questions, uh, I will be very pleased to answer them. Катюша, у нас есть вопрос? Евгений Львович. Да, Саша. Екатерина Григорьевна нас отключилась. Да. Технических моментов у нее сел ноутбук. У нас есть один вопрос в... да. или чат. Так. Вопросы. Я пока не вижу. Какой Нет, вопрос? Чат. чат. Вам нужно открыть чат. Не вопросы вкладку, а чат. Сейчас я. Саша, я на что-то не на то нажал. М -м 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 -м. А можете мне помочь вернуться? Я нажал на вопросы. Нажмите теперь на, на другую вкладку, которая левее будет. Ничего страшного, они нажимаются и отжимаются. Так, нажал. Вот. Так, а Нас теперь будет. чат. Увидел чат. Так. Угу. Внизу в самом а, раз. Э Thank you so many important lessons. We'll miss you. Но это благодарность. Выше, выше. А выше я уже ответил на этот вопрос. А, все, тогда все. Mm -hmm. That's it? That's it. Yeah. Uh, Саша, и большое спасибо вам <laughs> за то, что все это оказалось возможным, потому что без вас это была бы мечта. А так эта мечта воплотилась в жизнь. Дайте я, скажу об этом. Дайте я скажу об этом по-английски нашей аудитории. My deep appreciation for the royal canine and especially to Alexander, who is the representative of this great company, for the possibility to realize this project. Otherwise, this project will belong to the field of the dream. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, for the very end, I would like to thanks a lot to thank a lot our beautiful, I would say, unique designer who made these gorgeous pictures. And uh, you cannot imagine uh, the uh, how was how difficult was the process of this. Uh, uh, work, but uh, she's a gorgeous uh, artist. Uh, her name is uh, Tatiana Ostroglad. She's from Odessa. My big thanks to her, and uh, I cannot say anything else. I ag agree with uh, you, Evgeny Rovich. A great job. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Ну что, прощаемся? Да. So, bye. See you next bye, time. Bye. Yeah, see you soon. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye.